नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल इंप्लीमेंट ग्रेडियंट बुस्टिंग अलगोरिदम फ्रॉम स्क्रैच द प्रिंसिपल बिहाइंड बुस्टिंग अलगोरिदम इज दैट फर्स्ट वी बिल्ड अ मॉडल ऑन अ ट्रेनिंग डेटा सेट एंड देन अ सेकेंड मॉडल इज बिल्ड टू रेक्टिफाई द एरर्स प्रेजेंट इन द फर्स्ट मॉडल दिस प्रोसीजर इज कंटिन्यूड अंटिल एंड अनलेस द एरर इज मिनिमाइज and the data set is predicted correctly in particular we start with a weak model and subsequently each model is fit on a modified version of the original data set so here a weak learner is referred to a model that performs at least slightly better than a random model decision trees are generally used as weak learners in gradient boost Unlike AdaBoost where decision trees with only one level or decision stumps are used the decision trees used in gradient boosting contains some 3 to 7 levels Let's look at the steps involved in gradient boosting In this collab we implement gradient boosting algorithm and show how it works for regression Following are the steps that are involved in this process We first make a guess for y train and y test using average value of y train. Then we calculate residuals from the training data set which is the difference between the actual value and the predicted value and let it be r0. Then we fit a weak learner to predict r0 from from the training set. And this is called as f0. The function is called as f0. the incremental prediction for y is obtained as the original prediction y y train p0 which was obtained with the first guess plus alpha times f0 times x train and this is the residual prediction that we get from the weak learner and here alpha is a learning rate and we perform the same computation to get the output for the test for the test examples we repeat step 2 through 4 until we reach the number of boosting rounds so let us implement boosting and for that first we'll import bunch of python libraries like numpy pandas matplotlib and seaborn matplotlib and seaborn are imported for plotting utilities we will need to run several iteration so we'll so we create a function to implement grad boosting so there is a function grad boost that we implement that takes model the training feature matrix training label vector the test feature matrix number of boosting rounds and learning rate as arguments so learning rate is a float value and it is set to 0.1 by default we make a first guess of our training target variable using the mean y train that's what is done over here and the same thing is done for y test we initialize a test prediction with the mean of the training target variable then we calculate the residuals from the training data using the first guess and residual is difference between the actual value and the predicted value based on the first guess then we iterate to the boosting round and in each round what we do is we first train a model that predicts the residuals from the feature matrix and then we increment the prediction for the for the training examples as y hat train plus learning rate times the model prediction of the residual the same calculation is applied on the test set and we get new predicted values for training and test set we again calculate the residuals for the training and repeat the process and the process is repeated for the preset number of boosting rounds so let's create a synthetic data set on which we'll apply the gradient boosting algorithm so we make a synthetic data set using make underscore regression api from sql and data sets we generate data sets with 1000 samples and 20 features and 15 of these features are informative and there is a single target variable in this data set first 800 examples are used for training and 
the remaining 200 examples are used for test. We'll use decision tree regressor as a weak learner with depth equal to 3. We use squared error as a splitting criteria in this decision tree regressor. Now we'll see how the squared error reduces as we increase the number of boosting round. We'll store the result of each boosting round in the MAC train list. So we call the grad boost function and we store the, the result of the mean squared error in the list. So we perform 100 rounds of gradient boosting. Let us plot the reduction in training error with respect to the number of boosting rounds. So here you see the plot of number of boosting rounds on the x-axis and training mean squared error on y-axis. As the number of boosting rounds increase, the training mean squared error is reducing gradually. Let's compare the actual target value with the predicted value for a given boosting round. Initially, we consider mean of the training label vector as a prediction. So we plot the actual value and the predicted value. Here we show the plot of actual value and the predicted value on the training set. So actual values are on x-axis and predicted values are on y-axis. The actual values are represented by the red line whereas the predicted values are represented by blue circles. So you can see that since in the first round we use the mean of the training label vector as the output we have a flat line. After 10th boosting iteration what we see is we have seen the prediction getting shifted from a straight line to, to some, some structure which is elliptical in nature. Over here you can see that in this particular figure. Then after 100 boosting rounds, we see even better performance where the predictions are now closely matching with the actual values. And after 500th boosting iteration, we see that the, the actual values and predicted values match very closely. So in this video, we implemented gradient boosting algorithm and demonstrated its utility in the regression setting. We looked at how the training error goes down as the number of boosting uh, rounds increase. We also demonstrated that how the, how the actual values and the predicted values come close to each other. In other words, their difference decreases as the number of boosting rounds increase. 